Hopkins. We are very fortunate this evening to be joined by uh, Danny Moss from the TV programme The Haunted Hunts. Um, we've done a lot of interviews recently and talks with people from across the pond in America, and we thought it'd be about time that we got probably one of the best UK-based paranormal investigators to come on, have a chat with us, uh, and share some of his stories. So without further delay, we'll add Danny to the chat. Good evening, Danny. Hi, thanks so much for having me. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. And thank you for joining us. Can you hear us okay? I can. Can you hear me? Yep, hear you nice and clear. Nice and clear. Okay, Danny, so as I was just saying to the, the rest of the followers that are watching, we interview quite a lot of people from America, and we've done quite a lot of that recently, but we've not actually uh, spoke to anyone from the UK. So we thought, who better to speak to than yourself? You're probably the one of the best UK investigators that we've got out there at the moment. Oh, um, thank, so you. Just, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we just wondered if you'd be willing just to tell us a few bits about your TV programme, The Haunted Hunts. Absolutely, yeah. I'm um, yeah, thrilled to be here, happy to to have a chat for the next hour or so and a uh, big thank you to everyone who's who's tuned in to watch excellent and everyone that is watching if you have got any questions um feel free just to drop them in the comments and we'll ask away i've got a few to ask of danny uh, myself so uh, how long have you been involved in the paranormal danny and what was it that got you interested to start with yeah so uh, this is a question i i get asked quite a lot really and uh, it never it never gets old uh, it's a bit of a fascinating story because i originally started out as a non-believer if you like um, never really had any interest in the paranormal and it is true what they say that it, it takes you to witness something to then have your belief system changed and that's exactly what happened to me uh just 17 years old and um, so going back you know 16 years now um and it was a, a very random afternoon uh, i was round at one of my friend's houses uh, there was three of us uh, the owner of the house actually went out to a dentist appointment and, and left me and my other friend there um you know nothing special going on and all of a sudden we heard a really bizarre noise coming out from from in the hallway now you know, this house it was just a, a random house, nothing special, no significant history behind it. Uh, we headed out into the hallway and right in front of our very eyes, th there is a, a staircase and you can hear somebody running up and down the staircase right in front of us and there's nobody there. And that for me was the first moment that I thought, wow, that that's something I, I can never begin to explain if you like and um yeah it was it was really interesting and from that moment i went on a journey to research the paranormal find out what's legitimate about the paranormal what's not so legitimate and um, figure out how people's imaginations play a part in the paranormal as well and from there i set up the haunted hunts uh, back in 2013 and it's yeah it's been a, a hell of a journey ever since if you like yeah um so from what we can see at the moment on amazon or prime tv you're up to series three at the moment with the pendle hill episodes um how was pendle hill did you enjoy that absolutely incredible one of my favorite things i've ever done i've had a, a fascination with pendle hill since i was about 18 19. Uh, my sister becky was also on the team she's had a long fascination with it as well and it was it was always the dream really to go and shoot up there and, and film a full series over there it's a fascinating place and i urge everybody to get over there at some point yeah so um joe who's just commented is one of our team members has said that she's very jealous um it's a location that we definitely want to go to but it's so big you can't really cover it in a day so um it's something that we probably need to plan um for a good couple of weeks if we were to go and do it absolutely um, yeah so what would you say your favourite location has been over all the years? Uh, well, I, you know, I've, <laughs> it's hard to say my favourite, favourite location. You know, I've, I've done a lot and I've had some really yeah. good experiences at quite a lot of locations. Um, you know, Tatton Old Hall, which is my company's exclusive location, will always have a very you know, strong point in my heart because of what's going on there, our project there since 2018. And it's a location that I was in love with since a very young age as well. So, you know, Tatton Old Hall is right up there. I've had some incredible experiences at other locations as well. Uh, I'm very fond of 
the ancient Ram Inn, which is obviously one of the, the, the big locations over here that, you know, the most famous locations. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm quite a sucker for the old Tudor style buildings as well. And one that, that is also a favourite of mine is the old King's Head in Chester. And Chester as a whole, as a haunted city, if you like, you know, we featured it on series two, is a brilliant location. And Yolkings King's Head is right up there. Excellent. And is there any locations in the UK or abroad that you'd love to go to that you've not been to yet? Any dream places? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, Loftus Hall in Ireland is, is on my hit list. Uh, the Winchester House in America. Uh, Husker Castle, Transylvania, that's, again, on my hit list. There's a lot of places I want to go, and, you know, hopefully I'll be fortunate to, to get over there sometime soon. Yeah, I think it's everyone's dream. I think most of our team definitely want to go to Ireland, and America is seems to be the be-all and end-all. I mean, we watch a lot of the TV programmes where they go to so many amazing locations, and we don't have as many bigger locations like they do in America over here, so it's a bit of a shame. Um, so we obviously we're based on the south coast so we do most of our investigations um, in Hampshire down on the south coast um, we are heading up to Yorkshire to head to 30 East Drive um, I think quite a lot of people go there um, but one of the more discreet locations we're going to is the Antwerp Mansion in Manchester have you have you been there before yes yeah, so we actually filmed at Antwerp Mansion for series one of the Haunted Hunts right back in the early early stages of the production uh, really good experience there we had some very interesting things happen um we we seem to get uh foreign evps and they were actually in dutch now it's very interesting with the history of the antwerp mansion and um, that the you know it, it had a, a lot of association with belgium and yep. obviously you know the belgians speak either french or dutch so it was really really interesting to capture those EVPs and um, you know I'm quite familiar with the Dutch language so I did recognize it after hours of going through it yeah. uh, and Charlie one of my other team members on, on the show he captured an amazing moment with one of the doors to the basement which seemed to just open on its own so you get an actual poltergeist activity in there as well yeah it's a it's a good location and we were very fortunate to film there yeah that's really good with most of our locations obviously we have uh, guests that come along with us and stuff. So we're usually out by two o'clock in the morning. However, we've been given access for 12 hours to the Antwerp mansion. So we've offered people the opportunity to sleep, but if there's gonna be much sleep and I'm not entirely sure uh, that will be happening. Nice, um, nice. Another question, one that probably doesn't get asked enough. Is there any locations you've been to that you were underwhelmed by? So there's a lot of kind of hype around them, but didn't actually deliver on your investigation. Yeah, quite a few really. Um... If you're going back to 30 years drive yeah. um it's i've not actually investigated the building but there's a reason for that which i can't say too much on right now yeah. for you know it's something that you guys will find out in, in a few months time um that that's a location i'm really interested in possibly debunking but i am very very happy to be proved wrong and actually capture good evidence in there I'd, I'd love there to be strong evidence in there but right now my sort of head is fixed on it being over hyped um but I, you know i'm just not sure i need to get in there i need to conduct experiments in there and, and see what all the fuss is about really but it's a location that's been on my hit list for a long time uh, i've just been waiting for the perfect moment and like i said hopefully you guys will will find out what that is in a couple of months yeah, it seems to be one of the locations that every night there's a different paranormal group or somebody inside there. There doesn't seem to be any break uh, for that place. Yeah. Um, so Marie has just commented on the chat and said, uh, where was the place that made Danny sick? I think it was in season one. The place looked heavy, had, looked, had heavy energy. Yeah, that's, um, that's a place I will never go back to. I always get <laughs> asked the question whenever I do these interviews, is there a location you will never go back to? And that is, that is one of them. Uh, that's Paul Park Asylum. It's in North Wales, um, a really strange location, lots of sinister stuff going on in there. And from the moment we got in there, before we were actually rolling on the cameras, we could hear somebody above us walking around, heavy, heavy footsteps. 
And Charlie and I actually went up there thinking, you know, it was a homeless person that had broke into the location, was living in there. We went up there, couldn't find anybody. And yeah, that investigation will always stick with me for the negative activity that happened there. And yeah, I can't explain why I suddenly had this overwhelming sense of nausea. And yeah. uh, and then to be made physically sick with no explanation. No, I hadn't eaten anything dodgy. I hadn't got a, a, a tummy bug or anything like that. It was just one of them momentary things. And then it lifted. It was really, really strange. Strange, but good. Good, good evidence uh, in a way. <laughs> the viewers, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so Rachel has asked, uh, would the Haunted Hunts ever do public event with sleepovers? Yes, yeah, so we do actually run public investigations, okay. and that's how the Haunted Hunt started, really. And, you know, our, our events company, our event side to the Haunted Hunts has been very successful. We do a number of locations, mainly in the Northwest. We don't travel a lot um, because yeah. we work with a select few locations that we really want to learn how to trigger the activity there. So, obviously, yeah. Tatton Old Hall is one of them. We do Pennyland Hall in North Wales. Uh, Yold King's Head. We've also got a place called Walton Hall. We don't actually run sleepover events at the moment, and that's simply because of the time that you know the team have to invest in that. And we have got a lot going on right now. Uh, but yeah, we usually run sort of eight, nine p.m. till two in the morning. Oh, that's good, especially when you're filming as well at the same time. Very busy. Yeah. Um, have you ever had a spirit follow you home? No, 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 no. no. Oh, that's uh, good. No, I've. Uh, never had that happen to me it's something that gets asked quite a lot and i think it's something that people are quite fearful of yeah. uh, you know we get a lot of newcomers coming on our public investigations and they'll ask one of the team oh i'm scared that something's going to follow me home and in my personal opinion i think for something like that to happen it would be extremely rare uh, a very very rare case I know a lot of people say, I feel like something's followed me. There's been other well-known investigators say it as well. I'm a bit on the fence about that. I'm, I'm quite sceptical. Yeah, I, I definitely agree that for people that have come for a first time, have got that nervousness about something follow them home. Anything that happens after the event will instantly make them think, oh, that's because there's a spirit attached to me now. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah. Um, okay, equipment-wise, what would you say your favourite pieces of equipment are to use on an investigation? Yeah, so we have uh, a custom-made device that has only been with us now for about a year. It's called the Intravox. Now, anything that pumps out white noise into the fr into the atmosphere um, with different white noise frequencies as well. So you've got the, the big, loud white noise that you hear from, say, for example, an SP7 spirit box, the scan yeah. there, uh, to anything to um, outside of the human hearing range, something that, you know, dogs, cats can hear. So anything that can project different white noise frequencies into a building, I'm a big fan of, massive, massive fan of. Uh, I believe it not only acts as a platform for paranormal activity to occur, but can also act as um, a spirit microphone, if you like. Yeah. Uh, big fan of digital voice recorders, EVPs, yeah. and then very, very simple, but I wouldn't have caught hardly anywhere near the amount of strong evidence I have captured without a simple locked off infrared camera. Um, yeah. You know, vital part of an investigation, in my opinion. You know, there, there are tons of ghost hunting gadgets out there. Some people believe in them. Some people don't. Some people really like using them. And again, some people don't. I, I like it. I like the tech side of paranormal. I would rather do that than sit there around the Ouija board or sit there doing table tipping techniques that I would consider to be quite old school and not something I would necessarily believe in fully only because anything that is easily manipulated by the human touch can easily be debunked in my opinion and the more scientific you can get with an investigation the better yeah I definitely agree and we and we definitely find that Amongst our team, we have a mixture of people that like the technical equipment and some that like the old school, uh, you know, dowsing, dowsing rods, dowsing crystals, Ouija boards. Um, yeah, and one of the guests that come and join us, they've seen all different things on TV and they want to try every single one of them. So we try and have as many different pieces of equipment that 
we can to facilitate that for the guests. Um, and, and this is the thing, there's, you know, there's no there's no right or wrong way to investigate no. the paranormal. You know, you do see it quite a lot um, across the paranormal community. You shouldn't be doing it that way. You should be doing it this way. It's nonsense. You know, at the end of the day, everyone has their own preferred method and that's great for them. If it works for them, fantastic. Yeah, it's all about gaining the evidence at the end of the day. So no matter how you, you like to use it. Um, Joanna on our team has just set a torch. She's probably the biggest, um, the, the most cowardly ghost hunter I, I ever know that has to walk around with a torch all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so quite an important question that somebody has asked is what advice would you give to someone that wants to, that's starting off earlier, that wants to become an investigator, if you've got any advice? Learn, learn the trade fast. Um, learn what the do's and don'ts are in this field and you know one of the big things is stay rational as much as you can people's imaginations i've seen some wild wild imaginations in my time um where people leave absolutely everything is paranormal when it's it's just not the case so always be prepared to have a skeptical head on and swiftly learn about the paranormal community in this country because it is a very very strange place to be there are some weird and wonderful people in this industry and there's not a lot that can be trusted in my opinion so learn the community and learn the investigation side and keep them very separate and yeah just be prepared to keep a rational head on Excellent. So couldn't, couldn't say it better myself. Um, okay, next question that we've got, or next comment, is the two dolls that you got today from the antique shop look amazing. They're looking forward to what evidence you've got with them. Um, yeah, wow. This is, a, this is a really, really interesting case. And, you know, for those who are watching that are familiar with my work, they will know that, again, I had my belief system changed back in 2018 because if you were to ask me before then, do I believe in this whole haunted doll craze that is going on do i believe items can be haunted the answer would definitely have been no um it took one of the most unique experiences i think that anybody in the entire paranormal field has, has had and, and that's exactly what happened with me um we used to have a doll uh, just a, a very very normal child's doll um that we used to take to locations the doll was called grace we used to take it to places that were supposedly haunted by children to see if there could be any interaction with the doll uh sort of like a trigger object if you like and this one particular investigation at a very very sinister location called nankaluidi dray in ruffin north wales and um, the doll was knocked from a chair and for the following three days I just witnessed the most bizarre activity I've ever seen in my life where the doll would move out of our chalk climb. So we, we draw chalk. This, this is after a, a bizarre sort of run of events that occurred that, you know, took me to actually draw chalk around this doll. And then it would move out of the chalk. We'd lock the office up and it would happen. And that sparked this big project at Tatton Old Hall where we filled the location with the most legitimate haunted items in the country and again we're very lucky that we've worked with some very trusted contacts and um, some very good people in the paranormal who sent us items some of them have just been really easy to debunk some of them have been very very haunted and that's been running now since summer 2018 and last week i've not had i've not had to deal with any haunted items for about a year and a half now. Uh, last week, I was contacted by uh, a very naive couple who have absolutely no interest in the paranormal whatsoever. They're not believers, and they have ran out of rational explanations behind what is occurring with these two items. And they contacted seven other paranormal teams. They trusted me to take them on, find out what's going on. I opened them this morning. Uh, I've got a camera on them right now downstairs. They're in my house, which is something I've never done before as well. <laughs> um, the house is actually up for sale, so that's probably why I'm doing it. Yeah, let's see what happens. But a really interesting case, this one. And I do believe it's a genuine cry for help, this, from two people who just want to find out what's going on. Very interesting. 
we'll be looking forward to see what happens with those uh, for sure. Okay, so um, taking the, the Haunted Hunts team away, um, somebody's asked a question, who would you say is your favorite paranormal investigator, past or present, uh, role model or anyone like that? Uh, wow. <laughs> Harry Price. Yeah, I yep. think you've, uh, you know, his case is very, very interesting indeed. Uh, I, I've i worked personally with Nick Groff and I really enjoy the way he works. We're very, very similar in the, in the things that we agree on. Nick and I, Katrina as well. Uh, she's a fantastic investigator, Katrina. And then obviously, you know, a bit of support for some of the UK investigators over here. I do another show which is on Sky Pick called Paranormal Captured. Yeah. Um, and MJ Dixon, you know, I work closely with her. She's a well-known UK investigator, brilliant at what she does. And, you know, we, we've, we all have different methods and different ways of, of doing things, but yeah, definitely. I I'll sing their praises. Definitely, Nick Groff, Katrina, MJ, Harry Price. Good, good picks. It is quite interesting for me. Growing up, I was brought up by my parents watching uh, a certain TV show, uh, the first kind of paranormal TV show that was ever on TV. Um, but since becoming into the industry and looking into it a bit more, my eyes have been opened up so much more that there's a wider spectrum to certain TV. I'm not going to mention the name of the show but i think most people will know the kind of show i'm talking about but there's so many more investigators in the uk um i thought it was quite a niche market quite a small group of people but it's unbelievable the community that's out there in the paranormal world especially oh, in the UK. absolutely yeah um and, and right now you know i'm very lucky to be involved in in the sort of the production and the tv side of things what i can tell you all right now is that paranormal television in this country is about to shoot sky high um i can't say you can't obviously tell you too much but there is a lot happening over here and i believe that it's going to be fantastic for the field because i think more and more people and younger people as well which is great yeah. will start to step into the paranormal and that's vital for the future of this field because you know in 30 40 years time when i'm retired it's going to be nice to see young investigators coming in and bringing their methods. And, you know, science will have evolved by then as well, yeah. which is great. And there'll be new ways of doing paranormal investigation. And hopefully, you know, we will capture that that true holy grail. Yeah. No, that's really, really good. Um, we've got another question as well, which is quite an interesting one again. Uh, what do you what do you say to your friends? So when your friends say to you, oh, what do you do? Or, you know, what do you get up to in your spare time? You say, oh, I'm a paranormal investigator. A lot of people kind of give you the look like, really? <laughs> you know, do you just hide in the cupboard and jump out on people? That's what I get quite a lot. So uh, when your friends ask you, what do you do? How, how do you explain it to them? Well, my friends are, you know, the definition of lad lads. You know, <laughs> um, we're all very big into our football. We like to go down the pub. Well, when we could go to the pub. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you know, they're actually very, very supportive of me and uh, supportive of, of sort of my career, both both event side and, and in television as well. Um, so, you know, I, I'm very lucky to have a, a very supportive group of mates around me. But, of course, you know, when everyone's had a few drinks, they, they like to take the piss, if you like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I get it at work as well. I think my secret Santa gift that I got just gone was a, a white bed sheet with some scissors that says, if you ever have a quiet night and you want to scare the punters, so we ever get is, is stuff like that. So, I do. Um, what is what is quite funny, to be honest with you, since um, since probably around 2018, there have been times though where I, you know I've been out with my mates in the pub, and you'll get random people coming up to you and actually saying to you wow i'm really interested in it i you know i've had this experience and everybody's had an experience haven't they that they they can't yeah. quite explain um so it's, you know it's nice to get random people showing interest in the paranormal and that that's what i want really i want people to step into this field and you know make a big thing about it because the more people in the field the better in my opinion it shouldn't be this this closed off market that people yeah. think everybody who does it is is weird because you know it's just not the case there's more and more everyday people stepping into it right now and it's it's great to see 
Yeah, it's good. And like you say, the people that kind of say they don't believe in it always end up that comment with, I don't believe in ghosts, but this one time, it's like, well, you know, you're obviously open to something happening. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, okay, so Lauren has just commented and said, you've clearly achieved so much already in the paranormal industry. However, do you have a goal or something that you're hoping to achieve or work towards? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, I'm a very driven person and I have been since I was a kid. Um, I, I'm very much, you know, I'm only 31. I'm at the, the very beginning of my career. Um, you, you know, that that's what my team always tell me as well. You're right at the beginning of your career. Um, I, I do have a very particular goal that's in the pipeline right now um it's been a very very exciting start to the year for me uh, i can't say too much about it because I'm, I'm really tied into sort of secret agreements if you like but if it pays off it would it would just top everything off for me and it would allow me the platform to really bring my work into the, the public eye that's good very exciting to see what's coming in the future then for sure yeah um, abby has asked do you believe in psychics yeah so i'm very 50 50 with this one um i have worked with a couple of very talented mediums uh, who i have a lot of respect for and i do believe that people have gifts um but there's also a lot of frauds out there and yeah. I can tell the frauds from a mile off. And one thing that really frustrates me with a passion is when you go on to some of these big paranormal group pages and people post pictures and ask, does anybody sense anything from this picture? And you yeah. get a whole host of people going, there's a little boy died there. <laughs> That for me is absolutely barbaric and it's it's one of my pet hates in the paranormal because how can you possibly sense something from a picture on Facebook? So those are the types that give mediums and psychics a bad name in my opinion. Yeah. And I do feel that since the days of Derek Okora, rest in peace to him, um, everybody wanted to be a psychic medium. You know, and I don't believe that it's the. I don't believe it's something you can learn. I believe you're born with the gift, or you're not. Um, and like I said, you know, I don't, I don't, don't believe in them because I've worked with some, yeah, some very talented ones. I just think they are quite hard to come by. Yeah, I agree, and I think that from my perspective, I was very skeptical of mediums um, from watching them afar as a youngster on TV because you can always say. They've done their research beforehand. They know they, they know what's going on behind the cameras. But I think until you've actually witnessed one working face to face, um, that's when you can get a real reflection on how mediums work and how how clever some of them are and what they can actually sense, which is really good. Yeah, definitely. I, you know, the, the one particular one I worked with, um, I only knew him for a couple of days. I was put into contact with him. There was no possible way he could have researched the things he knew about me because they were very very personal stuff. Um, stuff that is just not out there in the public at all um, and and some of the things he was reeling off to me was like wow <laughs> really impressive yeah they are very mind-blowing um, when they get something spot on which is really good yeah. um, have you ever been attacked or been in the presence of anything demonic is another question we've got so this is another another sort of I'll say craze because it's kind of stemmed from um, a certain American TV show with Mr. Bagans, um, who, who you know, I am a fan of. I, I do like Zach. Um, he's very, very successful. There's a lot of people that don't like him and say that he's an ego and he's he's over dramatic and all that. But you can't knock the guy. He has the most successful paranormal TV show in the world. Um, so I am a fan of him. I, I do like the way he works, and I am a big fan of his museum. Um, but there is a craze now about demonic manifestations and everything is demonic, which again is just not the case. There, anything like that is an extremely rare occurrence and I've experienced something firsthand. I'm not going to say it's demonic 
because I don't want to use that word because I can't be 100% sure. And if until I'm 100% sure, I would never use that phrase. But yeah. the closest thing that I have come to of that nature is at Tatton Old Hall right now. And it is um, the grey stop, which sparked off my entire project. What is going on with that item is absolutely mind blowing in a really disturbing way. And we almost had to shut down Tatton Old Hall because of what was going on in there. So I've had people faint in there. I've had people turn on each other. The real negative sort of atmosphere uh, in there sort of smells of sulfur that will fill the room, uh, goat sounds coming, uh, absolutely just mind-blowing stuff. So that's the closest thing I've ever come to what you would term a demonic manifestation, um, just a, a very negative, powerful haunting that I fully don't understand at the moment. Yeah. Um, have you ever had a chance to be, go to the museum yet, um, Zach's museum? No, no, not in a minute. Um, I've not been to America for a very, very long time. Um, it's something that, that could possibly be in the pipeline in the future. Uh, but I would love to go because I've had a very similar experience over here with, with what I've got going on at Tatton Old Hall. Yeah. And, you know, I'm a big supporter of what he's doing with that museum, taking all these items. You know, not every item in his museum is haunted. No. But there's a lot of stuff in there that has been used in rituals, sacrifices, um, you know, stuff that's been in the possession of, of serial killers, a whole host of stuff that just makes the place really, really interesting. So we, we need to get ready for the Danny Moss Museum that's going to come soon then, hopefully, with all of your, <laughs> your dolls. And, uh, <laughs> uh, so we don't have to fly to America to go and visit them. We can just come and do it in the UK, which would be good. Yeah, I think Tatton really is it's more of a place of research because, you know, instead of just putting stuff out there for anybody to come and see, it's yeah. designed specifically for paranormal nights, for like-minded investigators and researchers to come along and investigate for themselves. And, and that's what we want because I can't do this all on my own and my yeah. team can't do it. We need other investigators to come and share their knowledge and share their experience in, and see what happens in there. So Tatton, it's not a museum as such, but it, it's a place of of research. That sounds good. Um, Rachel has asked, uh, what, what's your thoughts about the shadow that you caught on the camera in Pendle? Uh, in, in Lower Wellhead Farm was this one. Uh, I, I believe so, yeah. She didn't specifically say which episode it was. Yeah, well, th that, that for me is has been my finest ever captured piece of evidence. So I think she would be on about that one. There was another dark shadow figure um, that we captured at Sadler's Farm in episode four, but the one that we captured uh, in the last episode at Lower Wellhead Farm was absolutely, to this day, I don't think I will ever capture anything like that again in my entire career. Uh, I truly believe that it was a one-off thing that I've spent a long time trying to capture and the fact that I was able to capture it on a locked off camera for that series is just a dream come true for me. Um, you know, I've captured some wonderful evidence on public nights and private investigations that haven't been seen on television, uh, which I wish could be. Um, but to, to be able to have captured that for that series for me, an absolute dream come true but i can't even begin to describe how lucky it was it was right place right time yeah um jo joanna said um so based upon the evidence that you managed to gather at pendle what would you say is the best experiment that you've done whilst you were there that you'd recommend for other groups to try uh so when we headed to sadler's farm which was in episode four which i think is people's favorite episode really uh, it's a private house, unfortunately, it's not accessible to public. Um, I think the experiments that we conducted in there really, really worked because it was said to be the site of Malkin Tower, which, for those who don't know, uh, was Elizabeth Southern, Old Demdike. It was her home and it was the place where the Good Friday meeting took place, um, possible rituals in there as well. And nobody knows the exact site of Malkin Tower. No archaeologists know it. 
but this was one of the rumoured places and we were very lucky to gain access to that location. Uh, we had to pay a lot of money for it, um, but it was so worth it because we got in there and during a portal session, we captured a residual conversation of two women speaking to each other in 17th century dialect, almost plotting against us. And that for me, and the rest of the guys at the Haunted Hunts as well, was just one of the most mind-blowing experiences we've ever had, ever. Uh, that's really, really good. And, and again, I echo to anyone that's watching in the comments and commenting along, um, the Haunted Hunts episodes, series one to three, are all available on Prime TV, um, as far as I'm still aware, available to watch. Um, all you need to do is have the membership and you can watch them at any time. So well worth uh, the watch. Um, before we say goodbye, Danny, is there anything you'd like to say to the guys that are watching and comment along? Anything you'd like to promote for the future for them? Uh, just a, a big thank you to everyone that's tuned in tonight. You know, I know it's a tough time for everybody right now, and it's great that you guys are, are doing podcasts like this, um, you know, where people can, can come on and, and share their opinions and stuff. Um, and, yeah, just, you know, thank you to everyone who's supported uh, both The Haunted Hunts and also Paranormal Captured as well, uh, which is you know, a UK TV show on Sky Pick, um, Series 1, and we did a winter special. There should be news on that coming out shortly, which I can't say too much about now. Um, but, you know, get behind UK paranormal shows because they're not as dramatic as the, the American shows. There's some good investigators working over here in, in paranormal television that deserve a lot of respect. And, yeah if everyone can show their support for that that would be absolutely fantastic and a big thank you to everyone who's tuned in and a thank you to you guys as well for having me along tonight oh no it's really kind of you danny and thank you to you. you you've always been quite an accessible person for people to talk to get advice to uh, your presence on twitter and facebook hasn't gone unnoticed by people so thank you for everything that you've done for us in the uh, the uk paranormal paranormal community um, and we look forward to talking to you again at some point soon absolutely thanks so much thank you very much Cheers. See Bye -bye. ya. Okay, so that was uh, Danny Moss, everybody, that came and gave us a, a lovely chat this evening to share some of his experiences, some of his favourite locations, his equipment. Um, thank you to everyone that came along and asked some questions tonight. It's been uh, good to talk to you all so as well. Um, as I mentioned at the start, we do do a lot of stuff with um, people from America, uh, so it's quite nice for us to kind of stay on home soil for a little bit, interview some of our own local paranormal investigators. Um, if you've got any recommendations for people you'd like us to interview in the future, uh, before we can start getting out again with you all and doing investigations, uh, drop us a message. If you'd like any information about any of our events, um, we've had them strolling along the bottom of the, uh, the, the video here just to let you know what we've got coming up. We've got some exciting times ourselves coming up. So please do get in touch. Feel free to come and talk to us. Um, and thank you for joining us tonight. We'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.